أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Thank you for joining us for today's special live broadcast. Obviously, I'm saying live, but this is pre-recorded. So by the time you guys are watching this, it'll nearly be iftar time, and you guys will be thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying what we're about to do today. We are at the glorious Peterborough United Football Club. I'm joined by esteemed guests. Idris Khanu, Suriki Dembele, and Mohamed Isa. And you see, Peterborough right now are actually doing quite well in the league. Second in League One, got a couple of points over Sunderland, not far behind Hull, and actually in contention for getting promoted to the Championship. So, you don't want to hear from me. You want to hear from these guys. So what I'm going to do is going to ask each one of them to introduce themselves, where they play, and then we'll carry on from there. Go for it, guys. Uh, my name is Idris Kanu. I'm a striker. I'm a forward. Um, uh, yeah, I'm 21 years old, and um, I'm from London. Um, I'm Siriki Dembele. Uh, play left wing, and I'm 24. Um, um, I'm Mo. Um, I'm 26 years old, and I'm a striker. Um, like for me, I don't think it's too hard. Um, obviously, sometimes it gets a bit tough because obviously we. In tra like, training gets hard sometimes, and um, it depends what day it is. But it, it, for me, it's it's all right. It's it's normally like on the match day, but because I've done it before and I'm kind of used to it, it's not really. It don't really get to me too much. Um, but like some days it could get hard, and then some days it's all right. It just it, it depends sort of what day it is and and what we're doing in training. Personally, I haven't tried it playing football, um, but I'm gonna try it this year, obviously and um, we'll see what happens but hopefully it should be good um, when, we're, when we're not playing football it's obviously it's fine um, but it can be a bit tricky when you're when you're playing but I'll try but, uh, I feel like it's it's not been too bad there's been times where like especially in the month we're in right now it's it's not too hot the weather's nice it's kind of chilly still so it's easier to fast and train but obviously there's been times when you're fasting in July and it's baking and that's when it's really hard. I feel like this year it's, it'll be good, it'll be good to do it. Do you guys like alter your training when it's right? Do you do like less cardio or is it the same level of intensity? Well, you're expected to train the same, like that's how it's meant to be. But obviously some coaches and some um, physios have a better understanding of the month of Ramadan. So they will try to help you and then so that's why it's good now that more people around us are understanding what we do and that what we do during Ramadan. So they're they're trying to help us make it easier for us because it can be hard. Um, now, just what Yudi said. Um, obviously, th there's lots of Muslims um, around football. So um, if you're working with some coaches, they they do make it easier. Um, so yeah, just what Yudi said. So do you guys anticipate doing training like in the evening, or are you? Gonna kind of take it easy during the day, or is it going to be like a bit of both? You know, you're going to keep your levels, as you said, but you're going to do kind of an additional cardio. Um, I don't think we take it easy. I think obviously we're trying to be the best we can in training. I know we're fasting, and I know it's hard, but our, our levels can't drop. Um, because obviously, we're, we're, like this year, we're trying to trying to push for promotion, so we can't cause just because we're fasting, it don't mean we should take it easy on ourselves. I know what. Well, it's it's one of them that after we finish fasting, like you could you could do something you could do like you could go to the gym if you want, but like I think this stage of the season about getting as much rest as you can because obviously there's a lot of games that's coming up and it's a short time so it's after after we finish like fasting I think it's just we just chill, chill relax and then and, and just and just continue wait for the next game and the next training session but it's I don't say we, we take it easy or, or anything like that but the coaches do help us like especially this year I think they're more understanding and um, it's like they're doing everything they can to help us like today in training um, like they, they'll ask us if you wanna if, if you wanna sit out for for like a, a session or just like a little period but like we're, uh, I'm, we're fine. I think we're all right. But obviously, it's just they, they they understand what what it is, and and they're trying to help us the best the best they can. To be fair. Honestly speaking, do you find that it's become easier when now there's such high profile players like let's say Mohamed Salah, you know, those are, that they've kind of 
openness and understanding for the lower Li coaches and stuff to kind of get a broader understanding of what Ramadan is and so that it makes life easier for you guys. Yeah, I feel like um, it has because they're role models to not only other Muslims, but they're role models to of people that just look up to them and they they know like Mo Salah has been fasting like during like important games. I think he was even fasting um, during the Champions League game, maybe if not. But they don't. They obviously ask questions as well. So I feel like then people that just look up to him, they they ask stuff questions and they just they just understand more. They just know more stuff now. Then our coach, our physio, was asking us. Um, what we would like to break off fast with if we're playing the game because the game's at 7.45 yeah, yeah. so we break fast around um, 2 past 8 so during the game he's asking us what we would like to have and like, how we would like to do it he's trying to think about solutions so I feel like yes it's much better now because they've paved the way sort of way um, and even like other countries in the World Cup remember the World Cup when they were um, <laughs> the, I think it was Senegal they all, yeah. all of them were breaking it fast during the game and yeah. I saw it yesterday, um, a Turkish team was doing it. So are you guys going to like feign an injury as well? Like, two minutes past eight? <laughs> no. You know, ask one of the guys to hamstring <laughs> and then pass around the baits <laughs> and bottles of water. So let, let's talk about how you guys actually prepare uh, for the next day ahead. Now, me, myself, I just try to drink as much water as I can. And by like 10, 11 o'clock, I'm pretty sure all the water has come out. Mm. You know, so how is it for you guys? Do you take like... Um, the little Lucas A tablets before or after um, breaking your fast, whereas you know you actually top up on as many liters as you can of water, or is it just keeping a normal kind of hydrated levels? Um, for me, um, I've not woke up to eat, uh, so I've went straight into it because waking up can be a bit difficult. But obviously, it is woke up to to eat, so is more. Um, but I'm going to start doing that because it helps during the day if you've got food in your belly. Um, it can help you through throughout the day, um, but for me, I just I just wake up and then do it. Sometimes it makes it harder, but yeah. I don't. I think it's just normal. Um, like pre like you say, prepare for the next day. It's not. It's, it's just you try to get as much um, much like food as, as you can. Like drink as as much water as you can. But obviously, you can't drink too much. But it's just uh, you're just trying to keep on top of it. But I think it's just that like, normal. Um, it's not. I don't think you try to change anything. I don't change anything. Um, like try to get as much as what calls protein, whatever you can in. Um, but I don't. Like I said, it's, I just normal. I don't, I don't. I don't do anything different. So now we're getting on to the interesting bit. And the guys at home watching this, you know, everybody's really interested in hearing what professional football players eat when they break their fast. Is it a cheat day every day? Is it you know you're the nutritionist is telling you that you have to have a certain amount of different kind of foods. Is it, you know, like rice, and chicken, and, you know, naan bread, or is it, you know, like deep fried food? You know, on the days, obviously, the match before, are you certain types of food? And then when you've got like a couple of days break, you're going to one of the local burger places and grabbing a, a double patty or something. It's definitely not a cheat day. Um, like we, we can't do that because um, obviously we still got to train the next day. We got like today, like maybe like a. It depends, like maybe rice and chicken today because we got a game tomorrow. So you can't like, you can't have something like a. What you say like a burger or chips today. Um, so it's, it, it's just like normal proteins, carbs, whatever, whatever it is. But I won't say it's like a cheat day. No way. Um, Maybe like on a day off, then you could get away with it, um, like to break your fast with. But like on a on a like a normal day, it's, it's just it's just normal food to be fair. Like I'm not um, I'm I'm living I'm from London, so I'm here by myself. My mum's not here, so I know every, everyone knows that feeling when your mum's not there to cook food for you all the time. So I've prepared well to be fair. I've gone home. I've got lots of containers of rice stew. And uh, <laughs> so when it, when I know it's getting up, um, close to the time, I, um, I put in the microwave. I'm, I, I calculate the timings of it all, so I'm ready to break, pray, and I get to break my fast with it. So she she's already prepared for me, stew and stuff like that. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm happy. I've got my rice and stew. So it's, it's a bit boring having rice all the time, but when I do get bored, I'll. 
I might get a, a doner kebab or um, I might I might treat myself to something nice, but not all the time. I'll I'll keep to the containers for the time being. Just like Eddie said, being away from home, um, it's not the same. Uh, I miss my mom's food. I can't lie. Um, so what I do is just you know order some some hot wings with some fries sometimes, uh, or you know just get as much chicken as I can. Um, sometimes rice. I mix it up. Um, but yeah, being away from home isn't the best. So if there's any mums in Peterborough that know how to cook the food that they like, and the containers are starting to become a bit empty, we're taking orders for these guys, right? Yeah. They'll give out their, their level of spiciness and then we'll, we'll work it out from there. Um, guys, you know, training's now finished. You're all going to go home, you know, uh, rest a bit. What do you guys do now until it's hard to break the fast action. I'm going home to do some more sit-ups, you know, keep fit um, for tomorrow. The other guys. <laughs> 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 nah, just going to go home, relax, and um, uh, because we've got FIFA, a game tomorrow. Netflix. Usually I play FIFA, but when I'm fasting, you can be a bit more tired, so you like to maybe sleep, you know, pass the time, and then maybe play FIFA or watch some movies, and then, you know, that'll pass the time closer to the, to the for you to break it. Um, that's what I'm going to be doing. Like now, because obviously you wake up at like four o'clock to eat and then trying to go back to sleep is a bit, it's a bit hard. Like trying to wake up for fudge and then going back to sleep is, is it could get hard. So obviously, and then we wake up eight o'clock to go train. And then by the time we finish like 12 or one, um, get back home, try to get like two hours of napping. And then the rest of the day, literally just, if there's football on TV, you watch football and like today Arsenal's playing. I'm an Arsenal fan, so it's going to be a bit stressful, but um, I'll watch that tonight and then obviously just wait till till we break the fast. Yeah, I'm probably the same. I'm probably going to go home, have a nap, um, play some FIFA as well. Call of Duty, he doesn't play FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> play some Call of Duty, some Do you those guys that like heights and then snipers. Nah, nah. I wouldn't even know because I don't play Call of Duty. I'm, 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 I'm the best Warzone player at Peterborough United. Just you know saying. Why he said he plays FIFA because um, he used to play FIFA and I beat him so much, so he stopped playing it. Now he's a Call of Duty guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's not. He's not lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's going to be me until we break fast. So, do you have any words of encouragement for aspiring? young football players who are obviously observing the month of Ramadan right now. You know, uh, what sort of nutritional advice, what sort of, you know, I can see Dembele is there, he's doing some stretches out. You know, people are gonna, still going to be playing sports right now. You know, now that the restrictions have been lifted, a lot of people are playing outdoor sports, a lot of people are starting to get a bit more active because the gyms are open and the weather's nice. As professional football players, what advice would you give to those who are aspiring to either be football players or are trying to take their fitness up to a, to another level because you guys seem to have got the alhamdulillah you guys seem to have got the balance quite right you know you, you kind of know what you're doing you know what you're eating you know the limits to what your body can do and what it can't do so what sort of stuff would you advise those of us sitting at home um, I'll say the most important thing is hydration so that that can make the biggest difference to you like how you get through the day because if you it's not really about what you eat it's about staying hydrated because that you can get a headache keeping it hydrated you can feel much more tired firstly it's about stocking up in as much um, water as you can that's what i'll say personally as you said you everyone knows their body and everyone's everyone's different but um if you can give your best um you know to what you you can and you know you can uh that's the most important thing just just give your best and actually try um if you if you fast, it'll definitely you'll definitely get your rewards for it as well. Same, uh, literally um, hydrate as much as you can. Um, obviously, like if you're if you're doing any sports and and, and stuff, make sure make sure like the night before you like, waking up to get something like bef like before obviously the fasting starts and stuff like that. Um, it's literally like what you could do. Like obviously, like y your body knows what what you could take and what you can't take. Um, and it's literally just it's all in your, in your mindset um like if if you want to do it if you don't even if you don't wake up during the night like if your mindset say like you can't break fast like, like i don't want to break fast you won't do it so i think just have a have a strong mindset and and, and be be confident in yourself to, to obviously to go the whole day like it's, it's not going to be so hard that like you can't do it it's it's, it's just 
that have a strong mindset and, and, and that's it. Yeah. Alright right, guys, quick fire round, right? The first fruit you want on your plate is what? When you're breaking your fast, I'm a watermelon guy. What fruit would you guys go for? I'm a watermelon guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I say I say I'll say that. I don't know. Um, apple. I like an apple. apple. Yeah, I like I'll, an apple. Uh, for me, it's a banana. Yeah. Yeah, banana. Unbelievable. All right, guys. Uh, a burger or uh, some wings. Um, wings. I'm saying I'm saying a burger. Burger and wings. Wings. Hot wings. Very hot. Mama's signature dish. I, I, Your mom is listening to this. I can't give that away. I, I can't give that away. Um, it's just for me. Uh, and me only. Yeah, I can't give that away. I'm sorry. Everyone, I think oh, well, all my friends know um, it's lasagna. Oh, lasagna. Lasagna. I think she makes the best lasagna. To be fair, like, all my friends will agree. My mom makes some some like porridge. Yeah, so it's like the porridge is already filling. Then we put like some bread in the porridge. Add some condensed milk on it. So you have the bread Wait, so with what the you like as yeah your main dish. Oh, that porridge. bro. If I have that, mm. I would never get hungry. Okay. I have the, all the energy in the world. Because the bread's got everything, the porridge, oh, it's the best. <laughs> like, that's all I want. It's, it's been an aspiration of mine personally to finally be able to sit down with some Muslim guys at P20 United to openly chat about how Ramadan goes. And Alhamdulillah, the opportunity has arisen this year. So thanks to people at United for obviously giving us the opportunity to have this chat with you guys. I know the sun is baking on us and, uh, you know, it's, it's been a long day, so... I'm gonna once again thank you guys. You know, we'll put your Instagram tags at the bottom. You know, we'll try tagging you in our in our videos. We'll we'll do the whole social media kind of side of stuff so that when it starts going out, you guys can share it, and uh, inshallah, um, a lot more people will see it in just our small little community. So, the viewers at home, I just want to say thank you for listening in on this different kind of uh, program that we've got going on right now, and I uh, really appreciate if you have any feedback. Inshallah, we could try and get some more stuff done like this. In and around Peterborough. Asant, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.